Welcome to the 700 Club. For today's top headlines, let's go over to the CBN News Desk. Gordon, President Obama's health care plan is going to court. The new law requires all Americans to buy health insurance or pay a fine. Twenty states argue that's unconstitutional, and this week a federal judge heard Virginia's case. Jennifer Wishon has that story from Richmond. Before the ink on the health care law was dry, Virginia's Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli filed suit against the Secretary of Health. He argues the federal government doesn't have the power to require Americans to buy anything. Uh, the first part of the oath I took was to protect the Constitution of the United States and Virginia. That's what we're doing in the health care case. Virginia was the first to file suit and the first to pass a law protecting its citizens from a mandate to buy health insurance. The Obama administration asked the court to dismiss the case. For General Cuccinelli, the case isn't really about health care. It's about freedom. In fact, he says if Virginia loses the case, it will be the end of federalism as Americans know it. Take health insurance out of this bill and put Chevrolets in, and it's the same legal and constitutional case, basically. Uh, if they can order you to buy a Chevrolet, make it every three years, so the price tag's about the same as health insurance, but not afford just a Chevrolet, because remember in the health insurance example, you can only buy the government improve, approved health insurance. Virtually all Americans will need health care, and the administration argues the Affordable Care Act merely regulates economic decisions on how to pay for those services. Virginia argues, in the view of Secretary Sebelius, federalism is so withered and near death that states lack the power and right to go to federal court to test the validity of their own enactments when they conflict with federal law. President Obama is working to drum up support for the law. All these reforms are about more than just ending a dangerous status quo. They're about offering stability and security to Americans who need it. According to a Rasmussen poll, 52% of those surveyed support repealing the health care law, 40% oppose repeal. I just think it's terribly unfortunate, the very blasé attitude that an awful lot of congressional representatives took toward the Constitution in passing this bill. The case is now in the hands of a federal judge. In Richmond, Virginia, Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. A United Nations committee says the dollar should be replaced as the main international currency. The report says the dollar's value is not reliable. The committee recommended a new international system based on a group of currencies. The Liberty Council is suing to overturn a ban on handing out Bibles in public schools in Florida's Collier County. The district had previously allowed a group called World Changers to give Bibles to students during off-school hours on Religious Freedom Day. But the Orlando Sentinel reports officials later changed their minds, saying the Bibles do not provide any educational benefit. Gordon and Terry will be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. Those of us who are independent and live alone shouldn't do so without having emergency protection. And for reliability and peace of mind, I recommend Alert USA. With Alert USA, if you ever need assistance, just press your pendant to be connected to an operator who can summon help to your home 24 hours a day. I've been giving advice for many years, and I believe Alert USA provides the best emergency support and value for your dollar. Call now for a free brochure. The truth is, there's all sorts of crazy stuff your hormones are doing to your body right now. Some of it's good, some of it not so much. So if you get breakouts, don't blame fries, don't blame yourself. Blame biology, because even mild acne breakouts are a medical condition. Then call your doc and see if prescription Epiduo Gel is right for you. Put Epiduo on once a day and it does all this good stuff to take care of the breakouts you've got and to help prevent new ones. It's got two hardworking ingredients for breakouts together in this one gel. That's the duo in Epiduo. Dryness, spreadness, peeling, stinging, burning, or itching may occur. Don't use irritating products when using Epiduo. Overexposure to sun, sun lamps, extreme wind or cold may increase the risk for irritation. Use of sunscreen and protective clothing is advised. You can't fix your hormones, but you can do something about breakouts. So blame biology. Then call your doc and ask about Epiduo. To learn more about Epiduo Gel, go to Epiduo.com for a free Blame Biology Kit and find out how you could pay no more than $35 for your prescription. Over the past year, millions of Americans have lost their jobs. Steve and Janice Zimmerman were among them. With six kids to feed, money was tight. And Steve and Janice made a decision that defied logic 
and multiplied their money. Steve and Janice Zimmerman know from experience that when it comes to finances, life can turn on a dime. Our income went from, oh, possibly about 150000 down to maybe forty. Steve is an independent remodeling contractor and a board member of a local bank. In the summer of 2008, the bank eliminated dividend payments for board members, and the construction industry dried up as well. It's just like everything shut down, and the phone quit ringing, the jobs quit coming in. I didn't get calls from anything, so uh, we were hit really hard. In addition to tithing to their local church, the Zimmermans had also pledged $10,000 to CBN that year. But with six children, three of them in college, Steve didn't see how they could do it. I wanted to hunker down. That was my first impression, was to hunker down, to pull in, to turn off the lights, to uh, quit eating so much, whatever it took. But Janice knew they had to keep their word. I just say, Steve, we made a pledge for $10,000. We have to follow through with it. And I knew it was just a matter of time until he finally was able to relinquish it to the Lord and say, okay. Steve and Janice knew the family would have to make sacrifices in many areas. Our spending changed dramatically. I started clipping even more coupons. I'd look for all the sales and shop for the sales, for the food and, and uh, clothing, everything. Eventually, Steve got on board with Janice. So I just sort of abandoned everything at that point and said, yeah, let's just go for it. Let's just, let's just give where we said we were going to give and see where God's going to make up the difference. Then in early 2009, Steve got a call from Terry, his former business partner. 20 years ago, we had worked together for, for several years. So he called me up and said, Steve, I don't have any employees anymore. Uh, things have really changed, but I need help. I've got jobs. Let's work together again. Within weeks, Steve and Terry were back in business together. The phone started ringing again, and they were not just little jobs, they were big jobs, and they were with great people, and they're still flowing in. The Zimmerman's experience reinforced what Janice believed about God's faithfulness. I knew he would always come through. I did not have any doubt. We wanted to increase our faith, to believe for even more miracles in our lives. And it's helped Steve to look at giving a little differently too. That's been a faith boost for me to uh, not be uh, in the hunker down mode and to say God's bigger and to not just say it, but then to trust that it can come out of nothing. He creates out of nothing so he can bring finances out of nothing. He can. He can bring finances out of nothing. He is a creator God. Uh, he knows how to do that. He knows how to give creative ideas. For many of us in these uh, economic times we live in today, it seems hopeless. You, know, you, you look at your retirement fund and your 401k is turned into a 201k and you wonder, can I ever retire? Can I, can I ever have that good life that I thought I could have? You know. Yes, you can. With God, all things are possible. He's able to do things. You know, the, the issue is, are you putting him first? Or are you putting your retirement first? Or are you putting your good life first? You know, one of the things about difficult economic times is it enables us to get our priorities straight. And one of the priorities we need to have straight is God first. If he is then you can count on him. But if you've got him in second or third or fourth or even fifth position, you know, are, are, you, are you counting on other things? Are you counting on your own ability? Are you counting on your job? Are you counting on your business? What, what are you counting on? Are you counting on your bank account? Yeah. Put your trust in him. And this is what happens when you do. It's from Isaiah 35. Waters shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. This is what God can do in a journey through the desert. He can enable a spring to come out of a rock. He can have springs, rivers in a desert. If we'll only let him, if we only believe, if we'll only trust him. 
Now, the children of Israel tested God in the wilderness. How did they test him? Because they started imagining in their, in their hearts, well, can he, can he make a table here? Can he, can he bring meat here? If you can imagine this, they actually got tired of eating manna. And so they tested him. And the Bible says, don't do that. The only place where we get to test God is in our tithes and offerings to see, will he do this? Will he open windows in heaven and pour out a blessing we cannot contain? Now, Steve, Janice learned it. They learned it the hard way. They made a pledge. They made a commitment to God. And then things got difficult. But they fulfilled it. And then God came through in ways they couldn't imagine. That can happen to you. So let today be the day where you say, okay, God, I'm going to put you first, and I'm going to put you first in my tithes and offerings, and then watch what he does for you. Terry? Well, on a recent trip to Zambia, I met a young girl named Sevena. She became an orphan when both of her parents died of AIDS. But today, Sevena has a new home and new hope for her future. Sevena lives in Macha, Zambia, where she was raised by both of her parents until she was three years old. My father gets sick of AIDS, then she died. Her mother died when she was five. Not long after that, Sevena moved into a new boarding school built and supported by Orphan's Promise. The new dorms were drastically different from the small mud brick huts in the village. This is a typical home here in Macha, Zambia. This is where most of the kids that live at the mixed boarding school would have come from. And you can see every square inch of this approximately 10 by 10 house is in full use. One bed, no matter how many people are in the family. So can you imagine when a child goes to the boarding school, what an amazing thing it is for them to have space of their own, belongings of their own, a bed of their own is an unimaginable thing. Sevena was proud to show us her room. Now, did you guys talk to each other at night? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you talk about in here? We say that now we have to read nicely so that we can be a good girl at the end of the day. Wow. So you encourage each other here, huh? You tell each other to make good choices? Yes. That is great. While we spent time with Sevena, we didn't realize it, but she was about to make a big decision. And God's going to give you a vision for what he wants you to be and what he wants you to do. And he'll show you if you ask him. If you ask him in, the, in your heart and just say, God, I want to live for you. Show me what you want me to do. Then he'll show you. And he'll guide you. Have you ever invited Jesus into your heart? No, you have not. Would you like to invite Jesus into your life? Yeah. Yeah? Well, let's, can I do that with you? So, Sevena, just pray with me. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I want to know you. I want to know you. And I want to give my life to you. And I want to give my life to you. Because of this Christian school, Sevena has a comfortable home and a relationship with Jesus Christ. She's learning about God. And she's also learning computer skills and English so that she can have a brighter future. You know what I think? I think that your mom would be very proud of you today. I really do. I think she would say, my girl is so brave and she's so smart and she's so strong and she's going to have a wonderful life. Do you think she thinks that? Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Sevena is one of many children around the world who, through your gifts and through your love, are finding out that God loves them, that he has a plan and a purpose, and they are a part of it. We want to thank you for helping us to meet not just their physical needs, but also their spiritual needs. You do that when you are a part of the 700 Club. Will you join with us today to continue to touch lives like this? 
Our number is toll free. It's so easy to be a part of what we're doing. It's 1 800 759 0700. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club partner. Will you call and join now? And when you call, if you'll say you want to do it through Pledge Express, that's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work and you have none of the hassle. But it saves us a lot of administrative costs so that we can put it right into helping kids just like Sevena. And when you do, our way of saying thank you is to send you Power for Life teachings each month. This is our gift to you for becoming Pledge Express donors to 700 Club. I love this one. It's called the power of a pure heart. Sevena has a pure heart and now a heart that understands how much God loves her. Thank you for caring. Gordon? Well, coming up, the night Mary Scanlon decided to kill herself. I remember thinking, um, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just want to die. I just, I don't have anything left. I just might as well just give it up. And there was nothing left of me. See what convinced her to live up next. Coming up later. Bring your family back to the dinner table. I'm trying to give you as easy as possible. Why did you look at me when you said that? <laughs> With a Sunday feast to die for. That melts and creates something beautiful. Wow. And then you call Jenny Craig. Sample the rest of the menu on today's 700 Club. Oh, uh, wow. That's a wow. That's like layers of flavor. While Mary feeds her two young daughters, she also helps feed needy families around the world. While Bob hands a drink out to a co-worker, he helps give water to villages with new wells. And while Carl builds a house for his son's new puppy, he helps rebuild homes in disaster areas. These people all have something in common. They're CBN partners who have joined Pledge Express. I hope you'll consider joining Pledge Express too. It's a way to simplify your own life while speeding help to others, all at the same time. There are no checks to remember or stamps to buy, and your gift goes to work faster, helping those who need it most. So join us and change the world for someone today. Finding something you need at a discounted price is exciting, right? Well, today I've got great news. The best investments of the 21st century, gold and silver, both are great values right now. That's right. This is a major buying opportunity in the strongest bull market in decades. And now's the time to take action. Here's why. Following major gold dips, prices historically rise an average of 36%. So. If this pattern continues, gold may soon rise to $1,400 an ounce. You better seize this golden opportunity today. Protect and grow your assets with gold from the only company I trust, Swiss America. Education is the first step. Call or visit online today for the Pat Boone 2010 Rare Opportunity Kit. Now's the time to own the best investments of the century from the best company in the country at the best prices of the year. Call now. For three days, Mary Scanlon was beaten, drugged, and tortured. But when she was rescued by the cops, things got worse. Childhood conjures up memories of love and protection. Not for Mary Scanlon. Mary's relationship with her mother made growing up in Minnesota more like a nightmare. If she couldn't get the, the comb or brush through my hair, a lot of times I'd end up with it being broken over my head. You know, as a kid, when you're having things that are broken over your head, you know, the more that you're hit over your head, you start getting more and more broken inside. I felt very unwanted, very unloved, um, abandoned, rejected. Uh, there is many, many times that I was told that I should have never been born. Mary didn't care who her friends were, as long as they made her feel like she belonged. Uh, the kids that wanted to accept me were the, the wrong crowd. And so I, I grasped at that because, it, you know, they were showing me attention. As an 11-year-old, Mary took her first drink. But soon alcohol wasn't enough. 
By 12, she was smoking marijuana, and in her teens, she began using cocaine and LSD. And Mary's poor choices weren't limited to drugs and alcohol. I mean, I was so desperate. I mean, you'd be amazed at what desperation can do to a yeah. person, you know. And, and so I uh, chose the wrong men to be with and, and found out the hard way after, you know, being beat or verbally abused or, you know, um, abandoned or, you know, whatever, that uh, all it did was cause a lot more pain. By 23, she had been married, had three children, and divorced. For a while, she quit using drugs because of her kids, but she still drank daily. Mary began dating a drug dealer who got her hooked on methamphetamines. The one thing I can tell you about meth is that there's, there's only two ways it makes you feel, either homicidal or suicidal. Um, but it, it takes such a, a hold of you that quick. One day, a rival drug dealer kidnapped Mary. He assumed she was a police informant and took her to his trailer for questioning. For three days, he tortured her. He laced her water with large doses of methamphetamines, hoping she would talk. It didn't work, and finally, he gave up. After he had um, overdosed me on the meth, he dumped me back off at my apartment in Princeton, which is where the police had found me babbling incoherently. I was crouched in a corner. Mary was taken to a mental hospital. Child services took her children away and placed them in foster care. After three days, she was released. I could not deal with my children being taken from me. Um, I had lost all of my income at that point uh, because of the meth that I had been doing. I had lost my income, uh, my family, my friends, my home. You know, was I was just about to lose my home, um, my apartment, everything. And I didn't have anything left. Um, you know, and so I dealt with it the only way that an addict would know how to deal with it. I went out on a drinking binge. I got pulled over for my second DUI in less than six months, and I was brought right to jail. And so I remember thinking, um, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just want to die. I just, I don't have anything left. I just might as well just give it up, and there was nothing left of me. She was planning her suicide when another inmate invited Mary to a chapel service. Mary was skeptical, but agreed to go. They began this church service um, telling me about a God by the name of Jesus who would accept me for who I was. And I remember looking at her and telling her, Lady, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm too dirty for your God. I'm too full of sin. There's no way your God would accept me. And she looked right back at me and she said, You don't know our Jesus. And so when I got back to my cell, all I could think about was the words that the lady was telling me at the church service. And, and I remember thinking, I, I want to believe what she said so bad. And I said, okay, Jesus, if you really do exist, come on in and save me. And he did. Um, the only thing that I can tell you to describe what happened next is that that little tiny cell was filled with such a presence of the Lord, of Jesus, that all I could do was just drop to my knees and I, I just started crying and crying and crying. And I heard the audible voice of the Lord and what he told me as he was holding me was that I don't care what your sin was, all I care is that you came to me. And then that, then you couldn't keep me away from them church services. And <laughs> they saw the change in me immediately. They're like, wow, what happened to her? And I'm like, I've got the Lord. You know what? i got to tell you all. He's alive. He's real. i got to tell you what happened to me. But that was just the beginning of the changes to come. One of the first things the Lord did, um, you know, because I was looking at violations of, of probations and, and all these charges, and I was looking at a year and a day, which would have been women's um, prison. And uh, he took that year and a day, and he gave me 40 days to do, you know. Five months later, Mary received a phone call from Child Services. It was a miracle she never thought possible. And the woman says, um, you know, we don't know why we're doing this. You know, it goes against, you know, our recommendations and against the judge's recommendations, but we're in court order your children back home. And um, I lost it. I mean, I was so... I cried and cried like a baby. I just got on my knees and I was just thanking the Lord because I knew there was no way my children were coming back home for any other reason other than the Lord intervened. With God's help, Mary immediately quit drugs and alcohol. 
and began to rebuild her life. She's been clean for 10 years. That void, you know, that hole that I felt inside of me all that time growing up and feeling rejected and abandoned and unloved and unwanted, um, that all of that was filled the minute that I came to know the Lord Jesus and received him as my savior. It was just like I was just complete then. The one thing that nobody could ever take from me is my conversion to Christianity and my relationship, the closeness that I have with the Lord Jesus. And that's what I cling to. Rejection, abandonment, unwanted, unloved, no place to belong. You know what the Bible says? When your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. He puts you in his family. It's not lonely there. It's full of warmth and love and truth, power, power to let go of addictions, all kinds of them. And you know what? You don't have to get good enough to come. You just have to choose. You have to say yes to the invitation to belong to God, to let him invade your life. It can be a little scary sounding, but let me tell you, he's the only one who's got what you're looking for. He is the answer to your emptiness. He's the answer to your rejection. He's the answer to the woundedness of your heart. When you have those things resident inside of you, you make a lot of foolish choices. Trying to fill the emptiness, trying to feel loved, trying to figure out why you're here and what life is all about. When you finally hear the message that there is a God who loves you, that he wants you just the way you are, that's a hard thing to accept. Why would he want us? Because he created us to have relationship with him. And though life sometimes buffets us about, confronts us with ugly things like rejection and abandonment, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. The invitation to come is never rescinded. You can't get too far away from God for his love not to be able to reach you. So the question isn't really about God. It's not about whether he's real, whether he loves you, whether he's willing to accept you. The question really is, on our side, will we accept him? Will we surrender who we are to him and let him make something amazing out of our lives, out of our garbage, really? He specializes in that. He takes what the enemy meant for evil and he works it for good your good, the good of your family, the good of the body of Christ, the family of Christ. He can do that for you too, you know. It's not just for some. Whosoever will may come. Will you come today? Will you come home to the Father, heart of God? He's been waiting for you all this time. Pray with me. Just stop what you're doing. Do what Mary did. Pray with me. Invite him to show himself to you. Let's pray together. God, I want to know you. I want to know that you're real. I want to give you all of my garbage. I cannot understand why you would want that. Nor do I understand at this point in my life why you would still love me. But I've run out of options. And I want to thank you for waiting. I want to thank you for loving me even when I was doing my own thing, hurting myself, hurting others. Today, I want to change all of that. I don't know how you do it. I don't even know everything I should know about who you are. But I know I need you. So God, will you look down into my heart and my life today and know that I'm giving it all to you. I'm asking you to forgive my sins. You know every one of them. There are many. I... I'm not asking you just in a blanket way. I'm asking you specifically for everything I've done that's wounded me, that's wounded others, that's been against your way. Please forgive my sins. I'm also asking you to come into the center of my being as my Savior, but also as my Lord. Take who I am. Take everything that I have, everything about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I give it all to you, and I'm asking you, God, to make something significant out of my life that matters for you. Teach me how to think your thoughts, how to live for you, how to, how to make right choices. 
I'm just asking you to take my life and make it matter. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. There's a lot in me that needs to be changed. I'm willing. I give it to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer, then we have something we want to send to you that will help you grow in your new relationship with God. What do you do now, now that you've invited him into your life? This packet's called A New Day. I love that title because it's what it's all about. And it's filled with information about who you, how you can begin your new life in Jesus Christ. This is also absolutely free. If you'll call our toll-free number, 1-800-759-0700, just say, I just prayed that prayer and I'd like the New Day packet. We'll send it out to you right away. Court. Still ahead, a woman sat down to dinner at her sister's house, and that's the last thing she remembered. When I come to myself, I said, what's going on? Did we eat dinner? And she said, yes, we had dinner, but it's been two weeks since that dinner. Find out what happened during that missing two weeks right after this. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. John Mapes is 42. Mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret? Select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. Call 1-800-499-5158. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Hurricane Alex is now a tropical depression. It's still producing heavy rains across Mexico. Many parts of that country are seeing severe flooding and the potential for mudslides. Operation Blessing is on the ground in that region, working with local pastors and emergency workers to provide relief where they can. And Operation Blessing is also helping some families in El Salvador get new homes. Many homes in the community of St. Lucia are crudely constructed and offer little protection from bad weather. So Operation Blessing recently teamed up with Golden Acres Baptist Church and a ministry called A Roof for My Country. With these partners' contributions, now, Operation Blessing had enough funds for volunteers to build sturdy new wooden homes for three families in St. Lucia. They also have been able to assist the community with setting up chicken farms and installing a water cistern. And you can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to their website at ob.org. We'll be right back. If you're looking at a home security system, or even if you already have one, ADT can give you so much more. Like our new keychain remote. Now you can easily arm and disarm your system with the touch of a button. Even turn on your lights. You can also count on fast alarm response from our advanced network of monitoring centers. Plus great local service. ADT's exclusive theft protection guarantee and a money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied. And you can get all this and more for as little as a dollar a day. A single ADT system can help protect your home from burglary, fire, and carbon monoxide. When an alarm is received, ADT can respond quickly, calling local authorities for help. You can even add new technology like SafeWatch Video View. Now you can know what's happening in your home by actually seeing it on your cell phone, computer, or TV. Even if you already have a security system, it's easy to add ADT monitoring. Call now and save over $250 when you buy ADT's family package. It's peace of mind that can also save your life. ADT. Always there. If you feed them, they will come. That's the idea behind my Sunday dinner recipes.
Today's menu includes eye of round roast and my ultimate scalloped potatoes. So, bon appetit. Today we're cooking Sunday supper. We want to encourage you to just reimagine the kitchen and how you can have Sunday suppers with your family, with friends, invite people over. And I'm trying to give you as easy as possible. Why did you look at me when you said that? Because I just want to acknowledge you're here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Do you do Sunday suppers? Um, sometimes. It depends on whether everybody's there or not. At my house, they're often... Gone on gone. Sunday? Well, sometimes. sometimes. Depends. All depends. Right. But we don't but we try to. But if you to. had this kind of food, Ooh, would I'd they be, be there? there or be square. They'd yes. be there, right? Yeah, they all call about 3.30 and say, what's for dinner? Food is a tremendous <laughs> attractor of people. Yes, it is. And if you feed them, they will come. What are we cooking today? Today, we're going to have eye of round. Ooh. We're going to have what I call my ultimate scallop potatoes. And we're going to have a pea and caramelized onion oh. recipe. And for dessert, we're going to have a wonderful apple tart. Okay. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, round. Now, a lot of people cook their meat at very high temperatures. You hear that a lot? Yes, you I know, do. And you set it up to 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. I uh, it kind of came to this gradually that it's much better to cook low and slow. Okay. So what do you do, this 325 or... I actually do it at 200. No way. Yeah. And you'll see the result. For two weeks or <laughs> no? No. Uh, it's an hour and a half cooking time total for really? a three pound. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, and your prep time is really easy. First, okay. take your cut. Uh, you take salt. And I've got uh, about a teaspoon and a half here. And you just sprinkle. This is uh, sea salt. I like the flavor it comes. You sprinkle this all over. Um, then you take some pepper. Mm -hmm. Do the same. Make sure you get a coating. Um, then you're going to take some olive oil, and this is what the uh, thyme is going to adhere to. Ah. And then you take the thyme, and in a classic rub, uh, what gets it its name is you're not sprinkling, but you're doing that. Ah. You're actually getting your hand on it, and you're rubbing it in, and you're getting everything all happy. You turn it over and do the same. This becomes your top, and some eye around comes completely trimmed. This is a very lean piece of meat, so if you have the fat, it will add from? more flavor okay. to it. So, so how you easy is that? You do this whole thing on both sides, that what you just right. did. Okay. How easy is that? That's easy. Is that easy? That's easy. Okay. Put it on a rack. Put mm -hmm. it in the oven. That's a three-pound cut, uh, 20 minutes a pound at 200, and then you turn the oven off. Oh, and you leave it and in there. And you leave it in there for another half an hour. Okay. Okay? And this comes out. Now, how I get color when you're cooking it this low is you take that first into a heavy saucepan in three minutes a side at very high heat, and that gives it this color, and then you cook it low and slow. Okay. And it comes out looking like this, and then when you carve it, what you get is medium rare all the way through. That's so the sear colors it, sears it down just a quarter inch, and then you get a perfect color mm -hmm. all the way through. Is that a now that looks good. That that's looks horseradish. That horseradish sauce. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. That's one dish. That's easy. That's perfect. It's mostly in the oven. Very I mean, little yeah, work, very little After you did a little, little bit prep. of prep work, you're, you're done. Hands free. Okay. Okay. Next is uh, scallop potatoes, and I call this the ultimate scallop potato. This actually takes a lot of work. So you need them as soon as you can get them, right? What I do is I break out a trusty mandolin. This is a great piece of kitchen equipment. It's not that expensive. And instead of being labor intensive, you just use that over the guard. Put this here. And wow. I vote for that. That's and great. half a potato gets knocked out. And you really in got 15 nice seconds. thin slices. And each slice will be uniform. Mm hmm That ends up looking like this in a bowl Gosh. and you come over here you're not trying to be fancy with this uh, because you... it's all going to be covered by cheese and cream you just want to space it out in the bottom and you're going to have so many potatoes you're going to create four layers of this all right simple so mm -hmm. far so far so here good. comes a complicated step you take leeks Mm -hmm. You ever had vichy swaths? Yeah, love vichy swaths. What I've done is combined uh, this, sort of the flavors of vichy swaths and put them in with scalloped potatoes. Mm -hmm. 
where you take cream and the white part of the leek, you take these into a saucepan with a little bit of butter, and you just sweat them. You try to get some of the flavor out just in the butter. Okay. And then you take three cups of cream, heavy whipping cream. So this is not <laughs> a, nice a locale. Meal. <laughs> this is a, we are trying to yeah. hit the home run on this dish. Put it all in a blender, and you're trying to take these down to a smooth consistency so you won't ever bite into a piece of leek. You I just see. get the flavor. Okay. You're trying to create sort of a mini vichyssoise sauce to go into wow. the potatoes. Then I've got three different cheeses, Romano, Parmesan, and Gruyere. You put the Romano on first, and this whole quarter cup goes the first layer. Um, try to do it evenly. You then put another layer of potatoes on. You pour on the cream, then a layer of Gruyere, mm. another layer of potatoes and cream, <laughs> layer of Parmesan, another layer of potatoes, the final bit of cream, and then you press it all down to make sure the cream Literally. is gone everywhere I mean, with your okay. hands. And then do the final layer of Gruyere on top, and that melts and creates something beautiful. Wow. And then you call Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yeah. It took me years to develop this recipe. I kept experimenting, experimenting, and this is, this is at the end of all my experiments. Mm. I've done some others where you use um, uh, roasted garlic in it, too. If you want to experiment, roasted garlic is a good experiment. Mm -hmm. This is um, sweet peas frozen um, with caramelized onions. And here's a, a trick that I learned actually from a restaurant chef. Uh, never buy fresh pearl onions because okay. it's so labor intensive to take, them, oh. take the skins off. Um, if you buy them frozen, they're already peeled for you. Oh, that's great. And so you just get them in the freezer section and you get the peas in the freezer section. Frozen peas are always better than fresh because the fresh is never really as fresh as they say it is. <laughs> and the two combine together into something beautiful. You take the pearl onions, put them in a heavy skillet with half a tablespoon of sugar, and you cook it at a medium heat. You just keep moving them around. You keep right? moving them around until the sugar wow. caramelizes on the outside. That's beautiful. And you get that beautiful look. And these are caramelized mm. pearl onions, and this is a taste treat. You get the onion flavor, but that sugar, yes, and it comes in caramelized, mm. and it's wonderful. This it looks wonderful. is really good. Now, here's a French secret. You take the peas, you pour it in, again, half tablespoon of sugar. Really? In the peas with a quarter of salt. teaspoon of salt with half a stick of butter, cut into small little pieces, and you just let it sit there for two hours and get happy. It's looking real happy right what now. What the sugar I'm and the salt <laughs> does what do they is do? it helps what draw out the flavor from the uh -huh. pea, and it sweetens the pea, and then this is all you need to cook. Put t two tablespoons of water in the bottom of the saucepan, pour this in there, cover it, Ooh. stir it once in a while, and cook it for 15, 20 minutes, and it will be beautiful and sweet and fully cooked. The real calling card for this, kids love to eat these. I was just going to say, this could make a child who's not a veggie eater Just will go love them. And you combine the caramelized mm. pearl onions with the peas, mm -hmm. and it looks beautiful, and it tastes marvelous. Fabulous. This is one of the best. You ready to try it? I am always ready to try it. All right, I'm going to get you some <laughs> warm potatoes to go Ooh, thank you. with all of this. Move this. Maybe under here. And. Oh, look at that. Wow. No wonder you make your own scalloped potatoes. <laughs> we had scalloped potatoes growing up. It was one of my favorite things for mom to cook for me, and um, I just loved them and thought that they were wonderful. I like them too. I haven't had them when I think about it since I was a kid, I don't think. Um, Can I taste that first? Yeah. Mm. But the Gruyere really mm -hmm. adds the flavor with the Parmesan, the Romano. Oh, um, wow. That's a wow. That's like layers of flavor. Yeah. Mmm, mm mmm. Excellente. Okay. All right, you're going to go for a caramelized onion. 
with the feet. <laughs> Oh, that's a great combination. Isn't that good? Mm-hmm. And with the roast, it really adds a whole nother flavor or profile to it. Make sure you slice it thin. Uh, you don't want a thick slice mm. because eye of round can get a little tough. Here's one oh, of my wow. favorites. This is a French that's dessert. That's delicious, Gordon. Um, and the French really know how to do tarts. Um, and it's a real simple one. It's a simple crust you make for yourself. You don't bake it in a pie pan. You just put it on a cooking sheet. You roll it out into a circle and then you crimp up the edges. Oh, you take a couple of Granny Smiths, mm -hmm. you take them, you peel them, you core them, you cut them in half, and then you slice thin. You just create a circle around the edge and then you fill in the center to make it look like a flower. And this is a crowd pleaser. And you serve this with a scoop of ice cream warm and you'll have them coming back for more. Wow. And then you finish it with some apricot jam, thin with a little bit of water, and that gives it that beautiful sheen. Wow. The apples coming out of the oven will look a little brown. When you put the apricot jam on top, it just gives it a beautiful thing. That it really, <laughs> really works. It really, really works. All of these recipes are available on CBN.com. Uh, they're both available right now. You can download them, and you can do mm. the prep work uh, necessary. This one takes a little more prep time wow. than the other meals we've been showing you, but it's worth the effort. And once you taste those scalloped potatoes, you understand just how big of a wow this can be. Yeah. So do it. This weekend, say, we're going to have some food of love on Sunday. We're going to have an old-fashioned Sunday dinner with roast beef and scalloped potatoes. Yum. Still ahead. A woman wakes up from a dinner party two weeks later. She said, you've had probably about a hundred seizures in two weeks. But the worst was yet to come. So they literally said that at the age of 30, she will die. How she proved them wrong on today's 700 Club. I was having trouble getting out of bed in the morning because my back hurt so bad. The sleep number bed conforms to you. Wake up in the morning with no back pain. Do you toss and turn, wake up with back pain? If so, call us now. You'll learn how the sleep number bed helps relieve back pain by allowing you to adjust the firmness and support to conform to your body for a more proper spinal alignment. Just look at this research. 93% of participants experienced back pain relief. Plus, it's a great value because it costs about the same as an inner spring, yet lasts twice as long. So if you want to sleep better or find relief for your bad back, call now. Call 1-800-248-9998 for your free information kit with DVD, brochure, and price list. Call 1-800-248-9998 and we'll include a free $50 savings card. That's 1-800-248-9998 for your free information and this free $50 savings card. Call now. Brenda Robinson was a young wife and a mother of two toddlers, but sometimes Brenda couldn't remember the names of her children, even when she was looking right at them. More memory losses continued for six years, along with epileptic seizures, until Brenda decided to put a stop to them for good. It began with a small headache. 24-year-old Brenda Robinson dismissed the pain, blaming it on fatigue. The last thing she remembers was sitting down for dinner at her sister's. When I come to myself, I said, what's going on? And I said, did we eat dinner? And she said, yes, we had dinner, but it was two weeks. She said, it's been two weeks ago since that dinner. She said, you've had probably about a hundred seizures, grand mal, epileptic seizures in two weeks. I started to move and I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. And she said, your speech has even been paralyzed. She said, you've tried to talk to us for two weeks and you couldn't talk because the seizures, you know, paralyzed your speech. Two weeks, including several visits to the hospital, had vanished from her memory. She was diagnosed with grand mal epilepsy, which brought on violent, debilitating seizures. The seizures were difficult for her whole family, including her husband, Dan. Five or six men couldn't hold her down when she was having one because, I mean, it was almost like she was super strong because her muscles and all would be so tense. The doctor that Brenda saw had told her that a bruise on her brain was causing the seizures. According to him, Brenda would never heal. They told my husband that I would die at the age of 30. 
that my heart would not hold up to the convulsions, nor my kidneys. And so they literally said that at the age of 30, she will die. Brenda longed to live a normal life. Instead, she lived in fear, never knowing what would set off the next seizure. She could drop something and just fear would run all over me or a door could shut and fear would just run all over me that I wasn't there maybe to catch her or she was having a seizure or she was hurting herself or something like that. And I lived for six years in fear. Brenda says she lost all hope. Do you know what it's like to watch your two children sit in the floor and them babies and I'm watching them and I don't even know their names because it takes my memory. Do you know what it's like to convulse and hurt from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet and not be able to move? She could only think of one solution, suicide. I sat down at my table with my bottle of pills, with my tablet and my pen to write and a bottle of water and I was gonna write down a note and I had it set up to where the only one that would find me would be Dan. But Brenda never even got the chance to write the suicide letter. And as I sat down to write, they didn't knock. They bursted in my front door. My mother and my sister walked in and my mother had her Bible in her hand and she slammed it on the table and she looked at me and she said, the Lord woke me up in the wee hours of the morning and told me that you think today is your death day. She said, but this is not your death day. She said, this is the day that you start living. Brenda's mother prayed with her, and Brenda rededicated her life to Christ. Inside of me, an audible voice spoke and said, you're healed. The hindrance is gone. I knew that God had healed me. I knew it was his voice. Brenda was 30 years old when she heard God's voice and the seizure stopped, the same age doctors said she would never live to see. Brenda now has a new doctor. In the nine years I've known her, we've had no seizure activity and no treatment for the seizure activity. I still have people to this day waiting to see me have a seizure. It will never happen. It will never happen. Because what God does, He does permanently. Yes, He does. He does permanently. One of the great things He does permanently is to make sure that we will be with Him for all eternity. It's the great miracle, the miracle of salvation, where you know that you will be with him. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I will stand on the earth and see him face to face. It's my favorite time of the program where we get to pray for you. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These are the words of Jesus Christ, and you can find them in Mark chapter 16. Here's some other words from them you can find in Mark chapter 11. When you stand praying, believe that you have already received, and you will have it. When were your sins forgiven? They were forgiven 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. When were your diseases healed? Same time, 2,000 years ago. Believe that you've already received, and you'll have it. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Here's some reports from people who have been healed. Here's Audrey from Wilmington, Delaware. She was in a bad automobile accident. Doctors told her that severe nerve damage and poor circulation in her legs would be a permanent injury. Physical therapy for a year didn't help. She went to pain management treatments, but still hurt constantly. She required a cane to be able to walk. This continued for five years. <laughs> then one day she was watching the 700 Club and Terry, you had a word of knowledge about someone with pain in the lower back. It extends down your hip and into your legs. Move your hips around and you'll find it's completely free. It's gone. You don't feel the pain anymore. Well, as Terry was speaking, Audrey placed one hand on her back and claimed the healing. Within a few days, the pain was completely gone. In fact, for the first time in years, she has danced in the spirit in her church. That is a miracle. That's awesome.
This is Linda. She lives in Fayetteville, Tennessee. She developed a sore throat. The infection quickly moved into both ears and created a blockage. Because of that, she had a difficult time hearing anything unless it was very loud. Her doc doctor diagnosed a bilateral ear infection, and she underwent two weeks of shots and oral medication. While her left ear cleared somewhat, her right ear seemed to get worse. She was referred to a specialist. He wanted to insert a tube in her ear. Mm. One day she was watching this program when, Gordon, you had a word of knowledge about someone with the blockage in the right ear that was causing loss of hearing. You said Jesus was healing the condition. So Linda claimed the healing for herself. When she awoke the next morning, mm -hmm. her ear was no longer blocked. She could hear normally. She's canceled any further doctor appointments and is praising God that she's been healed. Praise God. Just believe. Just believe. In an act of faith, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing. If there are people watching with you right now, could you ask them, would you come lay hands on me? Let's pray. Let's believe God. You know, the Bible says, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Keep asking until you have your breakthrough. And let today be the day where you have your breakthrough. Where you look to Jesus. Look to his finished work on the cross and realize he did it all. He took it all. There's nothing more to be done but to receive. Let's pray. Lord God, we just lift the needs of the audience to you right now. And as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we join together with them. And we say out loud, be healed and be made whole now in Jesus' name. Uh, there's a woman, you're laying your hands uh, right above, uh, uh, well, right in the middle of your, your chest where the esophagus is. You've had burning, you've got problems with the flap from your stomach back to your esophagus. There's been just intense heart pain. And it's just when I said that word burning, it left you. You've been healed in Jesus' name. The lining of your esophagus is restored. You are healed. You can eat anything you want from this day forward. Be healed now. If someone else, you've got blockage in the right ear, you heard the testimony and you're saying, please say it again, please say blockage mm -hmm. in the right ear. And so God's heard your cry and he's saying it right now. In Jesus' name, let that ear be opened now and be healed. Someone else, you've uh, failed a stress test on your heart. You've been having uh, angina and, and pain and you're really worried. Uh, about what's, what's the next step, and you're looking at surgical options and uh, more examinations and, and ultrasounds and other things to find out what's wrong. God knows, and right now he's healing your heart, and that pain is leaving you now. And go back and get yet another stress test and realize you have been healed in Jesus' name. Someone else, you have a compromised immune system and the whole interior of your mouth is just filled with painful canker sores. God is touching and healing that. By the end of this day, you will have them no more. And someone else, you've had multiple back surgeries for problems with the, the discs and the vertebrae in your back, and you have some chronic pain because of that. And you've really been told there's nothing doctors can do about it. But the great physician says today that he is healing you, and that pain is going to gradually leave until it's gone. Uh, someone with a scalp condition from psoriasis, you've been healed, um, and your liver's been restored as well. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been touched by God, we want to share in your good report, so call us, 1-800-759-0700. We leave you with these words from Psalms. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. God bless. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson. From Thailand to South Africa, from Ukraine to India, and many places in between, I've had the privilege of seeing the incredible work CBN Partners are accomplishing here at home and all around the world. You've brought help and hope to so many people and changed their lives forever. Just like you did for Elmer and his family. This family of five lived in a tiny leaking room. The children were often sick because of their living conditions. That's when you came and answered their prayers and built them a new home. Each month, your gift makes it possible to feed the hungry, help disaster victims, heal the sick, and broadcast the gospel. So please watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. Thank you for joining with us. And here's something wonderful I hope you'll remember. 
fact, somewhere in this world, someone is thanking God because you were there.